Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's a little bit different than the typical PvE content I put out, and it's more of an opinionated video on a topic that I've been seeing a lot of, especially since Beyond Light came out, and that's resilience. Uh, I'm sure if you search resilience in PvP or Destiny 2 resilience, uh, you'll get a million different videos by tons of different content creators and competitive Destiny players, and each one seems to have their own idea of what everyone should rock. And this is kind of what this is today for me. It's my opinion after rocking both minimum resilience and really high resilience, how I feel each person should approximate in today's sandbox. I will say this is subject to change as you will find out why I believe you should rock certain resilience, but it's it's perfectly okay if you disagree with me. Don't think that my word is law and if you're doing something different, you're doing it wrong. Um, let me know in the comments down below what you guys rock if you have something else than what I believe. And I really want to hear your opinions on it because the more people I can kind of talk to about this, the better I can understand how other players might view it. Because the last thing I want to do is shoehorn myself down one belief, um, which is why I've been really open to kind of changing and messing with resilience. And I want to give my feedback on it. So the biggest thing to consider with resilience is what it actually does in PvP. Let's look at this stat-wise. When you go from zero tier resilience, which is almost impossible, all the way to 10 tier resilience, you gain 15 additional points in HP. Now there are some slight changes to your health versus shield values, but it's nothing substantial enough to get into and realistically has more of an aesthetic effect than actual gameplay effect. Um, but the biggest thing is, is that going from zero to tier 10 resilience doesn't really change the TTK or time to kill values for certain weapons, specifically singular or low shot weapons like hand cannons, some pulses, uh, bows for example, and it mainly affects weapon forgiveness for things like high burst pulses, um, auto rifles, some sidearms, some fusions, uh, such as where they might require an additional bolt to land in the burst for a fusion rifle, or you might need one or two more headshots rather than a body shot for something like an auto rifle. Only in rarely, really rare circumstances is the time to kill of a weapon legitimately changed by resilience values, and even so, in any cases where that might be um, present, you're left with such low health that you can basically be killed by anything else in the game. Uh, more often than not, it's the architects, which, you know, make an appearance way too often in PvP. Um, the only time worth doing so, in my opinion, with resilience is when the, a weapon that is actually affected by higher investments in resilience is so dominant that you run into it consistently. And having higher tiers of resilience either raises the TTK of that weapon for your opponent or it decreases its forgiveness. And I'll get into that a little bit later because I'm sure if you've played PvP recently, you know what I'm going to talk about. And that's 120s. But. Stepping back from that, because we're going to get into that later, uh, let's compare resilience to the other stats in the game. So, in truth, going from zero to max resilience doesn't give you a lot of room to work with. It's only about a 10% increase overall, honestly less than that. And that might sound okay, you know, oh, well you're going from zero to tier 10, it's about 10% investment increase, that makes sense. Well, let's look at it this way. For 0 to tier 10 mobility, you get a 40% increase in your movement speed, as well as jump height. For recovery, uh, it's 43%. Grenade, 0 to 10, uh, turns the cooldown time to 33% of the original cooldown time. Intellect basically cuts your super in half when you max out your resilience from 0, uh, from, uh, sorry, max out your intellect uh, to 10 intellect from 0. And whenever you max out your strength, it basically turns it into 25% of the original time. Um, this is pretty critical because it shows how limited resilience is in PvP. Um, it's not something that you're going to drastically see a difference to whenever you swap between. For example, I've played so much PvP and I've used certain armor sets and certain roles that I can tell whenever I'm rocking 90 versus 100 mobility or I can tell when I'm rocking 60 recovery instead of 80 or 90, even 100 recovery at times. I really don't notice a difference between resilience outside of a few factors. And it's simply that the investment of higher tier resilience, I don't see it in most cases. Um, the biggest thing to look at is whenever you're investing a lot of points into the one stat category, you're losing out on investment in other areas. And the main issue I have with higher resilience is the effect that you get 
for investing, say, 100 points of resilience into your character really isn't as worth it or noticeable as it is in other categories. And whenever you're investing those points, you can't put, say, those additional points into getting your intellect faster or being a little bit more agile on the map or getting your grenade back quicker. And that becomes a problem. Now, looking into resilience specifically more, the biggest issue I have with it is special weapons, as special weapons don't care about your resilience in PvP. Higher tiers of resilience have no effect on sniper rifles, including um, 7 or 72 RPMs all the way up to the low RPM, harder hitting sniper rifles. There are some Warlock shenanigans, specifically with 72 RPMs, where um, at certain resilience levels you'll live through two body shots or live through a body shot with a empowering rift versus you won't at smaller tier resilience but let's be honest if you're turning the corner and you see a warlock sitting in a rift adsing with a 72 rpm you might as well just bend over and accept what's coming because you're not winning regardless of what you have uh, the other most prominent one is shotguns uh, specifically film winter being part of the shotgun meta and arguably the best shotgun in the game unless you main chaperone for years like i do there are some less consistent hit marks and kills at higher ranges closer to that range limit for Felwinters, but it's nowhere near consistent enough to begin to have any solid values where if you have this resilience at this distance you live, but if you rock below that resilience you die at this distance where you live with say like seven or eight resilience. It's really inconsistent and it's nothing that we can have concrete evidence to say, okay, if you rock this resilience you live to this, because there are many different factors and different roles on shotguns that really determine its kill range, and your resilience value really isn't quantifiable in relation to that. Sure, if you're rocking 10 resilience and, you're, and your friend's rocking zero resilience and someone's running around the map with a shotgun, you typically have a better chance of living at certain ranges than your friend, but it's nothing consistent enough to begin with as shotguns are just horribly inconsistent at those longer ranges anyway, that any certifiable evidence that, hey, you're living and he's not, really goes out the window just to chance. Um, the final thing is fusion rifles with special weapons just because they require one more bolt to hit in its initial burst for example but i mean it's a fusion rifle and they're not really in the best place especially since Arantel uh got chopped which i'm very happy about um but honestly if you have concerns about facing a brain dead 30 year old spamming to less doing the crucible and your initial response is well i gotta bump up that resilience you're doing it wrong you should only rock high resilience in my opinion if a weapon is so common and it's so affected by resilience that when you face off on it consistently that your resilience plays an impact on that gunfight. And I mean this. And I stand by this. And this is where you're probably open waiting for 120s. 120 hand cannons are affected by certain resilience levels. And this is the main reason I rock the resilience I do today. So for those of you that don't know, um, 120 hand cannons are absolutely meta right now. It's basically a primary sniper rifle that has insane bullet magnetism to your crit and really good forgiveness. I mean, you can shoot people in the junk and it'll just give you headshots. The dominance of 120s in PvP, in my opinion, is the only reason to invest significant amounts into resilience. At five resilience or greater, you die to two headshots and one body shot from a 120 at its typical range, which is very far, I might add. Any less than this, so for T resilience or less, you die to one headshot and two body shots. Now, this isn't to say that like, this is the end all be all reason to rock resilience, as I mainly have an issue with going solely off of this in more high-end competitive play, where players have a tendency to hit their shots with much greater consistency than at something like 6v6 Crucible, for example where players might not be as finely skilled with weapons in order to hit crits consistently. So yeah, in that case, if someone's rocking 120 they just got and they're running around in control and they see you, they're probably not gonna hit all three of their crits. They might miss a little bit. And then missing might be that instance where, hey, you can survive when you're rocking like five results or above that one headshot and two body shots you landed. And you can kill him in that gunfight. But in competitive crucible and trials and even higher end elim, 
they're gonna hit those headshots more often than not. But just the fact that it is able to do this with a weapon that is considered the meta for primaries is a good enough reason to rock it in both high end and low end PvP. Um, the biggest thing that I kind of view whenever going into higher tier resilience is what are you actually gaining out of it? Again, at a certain point, you're getting certain weapons and certain archetypes a disadvantage um, in a standard gunfight. Don't think of higher resilience as a buff to you, but a debuff to your opponents that limits their weapon forgiveness. Whenever you're rocking super high resilience, you're really narrowing what you can actually affect with that. And in my opinion, it's not worth it because some of the stuff that is really affected at those higher ends just is so uncommon. And I don't believe it's worth it to invest a hundred points of something that you could cut in half and invest in your mobility, you know, your intellect, your super faster, your grenade with stasis is extremely overpowered. You know, I, I don't believe it's worth doing that on the off chance your opponent might be using something. Now I will say, I do have a 90 tier resilience, or sorry, 9 tier resilience that I use for a Kite and Ramparts build that, that I use in Trials. And something like that where you're actively gaining something outside of that initial um, HP buff with resilience is very crucial and I believe is the only reason you should be rocking higher tier resilience because then there's another side effect to it that you're actually benefiting from. But other than that, I really don't see... I really don't see resilience as this kind of top tier thing where if you're not rocking 100 resilience, you're not getting anything done and you're a detriment to your team. Um, again, don't think of resilience as a buff to you, it's just a debuff to your enemies that requires them uh, to hit their shots, essentially. Um, but this requirement only applies to a handful of weapons, and again, 99% of them I can't validate using. The only one I really would say are like high impact pulse rifles, where something like Vigilance Wing is affected, and again, that's pretty rare still, and really the only reason I see is 120 hand cans right now. So putting that in perspective, as long as 120s are the way they are, I would recommend rocking 5 resilience minimum, and if you're a titan who's using something like chitons or just really enjoys having your barricade, feel free to do more. But for warlocks and hunters, honestly you're better off just investing that 5 resilience and then investing in your class specific trait. So for hunters, your mobility, warlocks, your recovery, and in my opinion, uh, mobility is the number one perk out of those three to invest in, just because the difference is night and day between something like four mobility and seven mobility, and even higher, it's very, very noticeable. Like I said, I can tell whenever I'm rocking 100 versus uh, 90 mobility. It's that obvious. And it's something that I believe is truly worth investing that many points into, as well as something like recovery too. Because the faster that you're able to uh, heal off from a gunfight, especially a more team-oriented and competitive play, the more often you're able to kind of assist with your teammates or get back into gunfights that can give you an advantage. Um, but again, in my opinion, for today's meta right now, um, I, I believe that if you rock five resilience, you're fine. I can't really find a reason to consistently rock higher end resilience outside of something again like Chitons. There's just no reason to. The benefits you're getting versus the drawback of investing those additional 50 points into something like that is so limited. And I, I personally feel that, especially with higher end PvP with more skilled players, the off chance that they're using something affected by this or that they're just simply not going to hit their shots in some instances isn't worth investing that. I would rather invest in something that I know affects my gameplay and makes me a better player in, the, in that regard. For example, I'm more agile, I recover faster, get my super faster, especially with the prevalence of stasis. Um, I, I think that's more reasonable than investing in higher tier resilience. So to recap, special weapons really don't care about your resilience. The only time it really affects anything is with certain primary weapons, especially at higher tier resilience, and most of those weapons aren't prevalent enough. With the dominance of 120 hand cannons though, and the difference that 5 resilience does make in certain gunfights, especially with more casual PvP, but also I will say in higher end PvP, on those occasions where someone misses a headshot and hits a body shot, having that 5 resilience is very crucial. 
And so in my opinion, five resilience across the board. And if you're rocking something like Titans and tight on Titan, where your resilience does affect something else outside of that, I would rock more. But as the sandbox is subject to change and as 120s are probably going to change in the future, this value will vary. And I'll be sure in the next sandbox, whenever we actually have a more defined meta and possibly new weapons to play with, new armor to play with, I'll let you know what I think then. Thank you guys so much for walking, watching, clicking on the video. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. If you liked the video, be sure to like it, be sure to subscribe, share it with a friend if you think they might find this interesting. And thanks for stopping by. Have a good one.